Hello, this is a presentation about the ceramic object or more succinctly put an enigmatic non narrative abstract form in ceramics. That's a lot of language. So let's see what we might mean by this. Um, as we get started here. So sculptural, it's a, we're talking about sculptures and ceramics and we're talking about an object that is compelling, engaging, intriguing, sculptural, but unrecognizable. In other words, it doesn't lend itself to a narrative. Oh, it's a dog or a cat or a sailboat, or it looks like a tree in the wind, nothing like that. We're talking about objects that are compelling, uh, intriguing um, for a number of reasons, uh, but they are, um, uh, so, so we're going to look at them and uh, discuss them and, and get an idea for, of this project. So here you have um, a sculpture that is doing a number of things. It is wall based. So this that's an option that you have. It hangs on the wall. And that sort of, shall we say, cookie form, that brown textured, uh, almost lumpish form uh, is, is the foundation of the piece. And it's operating uh, very strongly as a, um, as a um, kind of basis structure for the piece, but at the same time, it's using some nice techniques of contrast. So it has that brown clay earthy surface without any real glossy uh, surface. And that then contrasts with the other pieces in, that, are, that are coming out from it. And those include um, the orange, the green, and the yellow elements. Those yellow funnels look like um, basically colored clay. So they're probably yellow porcelain forms that might be made. And they could be added after the brown form is fired and then epoxied in, as well as the green and orange forms could be epoxied in. Or the pieces could be added while everything was wet and then glazed very carefully um, in this fashion. So. Um, but you can see the color, the bright colors contrasting from the earth tones, the shiny smooth texture contrasting with the uh, with the earthy uh, rough, roughened texture. So it's a great, great piece, intriguing form, definitely leading you to ask questions about what these things are and and how they uh, what they feel like. But you your mind will not settle on anything that uh, in any way resembles uh a, a description that is a narrative description. Let's see. Here's another form, and I'm a little frustrated with this. Maybe I can put it up here. That might be better. This form um, is uh, entirely coil built. Once again, it is on the wall, and it's uh, it's got a beautiful soft matte black surface, which you can either get by using a dark clay such as a black mountain or by a, a staining clay once you've made the sculpture. What makes this sculpture really work is the contrast of the softness of the, the bulbous form and, and the precision with which one form meets another. There are no lines on this form. That's really important when you're sculpting something like this and you're trying to make those divisions between these three forms, the, the clay is, is moved into one form or another. In other words, um, there is, there's no line drawn, but there's, there's a sculpting of, okay, the, this form flows to this point, and then that's where the other form takes off from there. So that's how this piece is made as you're sculpting. And probably just technically a, a tool that would work really well for this kind of work would be your um, stainless steel rib. Here's another variation. Uh, this one, the same idea, but in white. And the other thing you can see is this one is not wall-based, but um, is a standing, freestanding, three-dimensional sculpture in the round. And again, these soft bulbous forms, uh, one applied on another, 
um, with actually uh, a look underneath to see this um, this opening. And this is by the Sacramento sculptor Gerald Wahlberg. Uh, so very intriguing ceramic form. Again, contrasting the softness. In fact, it's all about the softness, the way that top form just lays on top of the bottom form. And another Jerry Wahlberg. And here, uh, he's got that soft orb form. Again, all of these are coil built, but then he's um, he's contrasting that with the rigid geometry of this opening, this, this rectangular window into the form itself. And for that to work, he needs the form to be dark. So you're not seeing, when you look in there, you're not seeing clay, uh, light colored clay. I imagine he has either uh, stained it uh, with a dark stain or he's actually painted it with uh, black paint to get that, um, the, the way the light just disappears once it goes inside. Here's another Jerry Wahlberg, again, this soft form meeting at these very precise, these are very pleasing forms to make and very satisfying uh, to create. And uh, you, um, again, you focus on the, what, you're coil building these soft forms and, and it builds, it works in stages. You get the general form there and then you leave it thick where they meet so that you can carve down and make a precision uh, transition from one form to the next. So this is a fascinating uh, sculpture here. Um, and I think one of the things that I find fascinating about it is how um, how there is a quality, there's a word for it, which I just learned and seem to have forgotten, but the human capacity to associate meaning or, or to associate, in this case, you might call it a human face, even though there really is no uh, human face indicated, but just that, that sharp right angle where it is tends to indicate a uh, brow and, uh, and the ridge of the nose. Um, but it also, it's a lovely uh, glazing of the form. It's got a um, it's got a black surface um, uh, with a, a sprayed uh, green over it, uh, and quite lovely. So, um, and it's a freestanding piece. It it stands in. It's a three dimensional, in the round piece. Here's a variation of the same idea, and this one, they really are. Um, are pushing uh, the idea with that little button down below with uh, the implied lips there. They really do want you to see a human uh, presence. Uh, so, and it, it, it is remarkable, and this is something to play with as a sculptor, how little it takes to suggest figure or some other identifiable object. You can really uh, play with that by, you know, like I think the one on the left is more successful because it doesn't give us as much, and yet we still have that that idea in our head. Whereas the one on the right is a is has gone a little too far, I think, in my in my reckoning. Here's a lovely uh, example here. Uh, again, you see these stacked forms. I would guess this piece was thrown on the wheel. In fact, I'm certain of it. You can see it in the top on the left. Uh, and in the, in the foreground, uh, the piece coming out, the little spiral uh, lines is in indicative of throwing. So these pieces were thrown separately and then they were uh, attached to one another while they were still soft and then pushed a bit so that the softness kind of embraces the form below, billows out a bit. It's quite a lovely way of working. And then these rised, raised bumps are done with a uh, slip and probably applicated with, uh, with uh, basically one of those uh, squeeze bulbs that you might use for ears or for nasal, uh, clearing nasal passages of children. Um, and they're also available for slip application like this. So you very carefully go around and, and dot the slip. And, and the slip itself, since it has a dimension, it won't flatten out. It's, a, it's another form of clay. So that's how you get this bumping. A uh, pattern, a really uh, beautiful pattern of spots here. And this is quite an intriguing piece as well, wall based um, and uh, coil built. And what you have uh, featured in this one is that the, the lower piece and the upper piece have a section where holes have been drilled. And after the pieces are finished fired, um, then these wires are installed. 
uh, to make the piece uh, as you see it now. Mixed media, always a very interesting way to, to work. This is a piece um, uh, that is a kind of ceramics that uh, pioneered by the artist Tony Marsh. This might be a Tony Marsh piece, I'm not sure. I don't think it is, but you can see these, uh, these uh, disc forms echoing each other. Um, and then once the form is made, uh, probably uh, with a drill, uh, these holes are placed after the piece has become leather hard. One of the things you see with these hole pieces, with the drilled holes, is that um, so you make the piece, and these are probably slab built, would be my best guess. And you make the piece, and as it gets uh, medium to hard, probably hard leather hard, you begin to put the holes in, and very carefully, obviously. But one of the, the dynamics of using a hole in a 3D form is that the holes will, because light doesn't go all the way down the hole, they become, they become dark spots. And it's especially effective on that white clay on the top piece. Here, uh, the artist works in module units. All of these are um, slip casts from a mold, and um, they're, I, they're from the identical mold. They're all made from the same mold and ornately decorated and fired and then assembled. They're, they're not glued together. They're actually sitting in this posi position assembled. Uh, this is an artist from Northern California named Sarah Logan. And I think uh, I find her work uh, beautiful uh, and compelling because of the precision and um, the detail and the, the, the really nice transition of textures here. So you can see uh, the, the real uh, textured area that looks almost like an underground, underwater sea creature isn't a tremendously complex technique. It is made by taking a dull pencil and repeatedly stabbing the piece over and over and over and over and over again until it begins to look like that. Here's another example, and you can see her using the same technique we were looking at earlier for these soft forms, having these lines come together and really being worked through. And then she's doing things like adding these little balls and putting holes in them and then having that textured place as well. Here is a large coil built piece. You can tell that it's quite large. And what you're looking at is some uh, some nice color work with the gold, uh, probably it could be gold leaf, it could be um, it could be gold luster. That's a lot of gold luster, which is quite expensive, but um, some nice uh, matte black glaze contrasting with the orange glaze and then the gold center. And that, that idea of cutting into the solid form is quite effective as well. Here's another piece, uh, again, quite tall and taking advantage of that height by uh, creating a form with, uh, with, with a lot of glaze on it uh, that can run. And so that running accentuates the verticality, the height uh, really, and in a piece like this, the silhouette is everything. Um, and when you're considering uh, pieces on this scale, you wanna very carefully measure the kiln that you're going to bisque something in and then the kiln that it's going to be fired in to make sure that the piece will not exceed those dimensions, something I've only done once. Here again is a modular piece uh, made from uh, a mold and the mold is identical for all three of these pieces and then they're stacked. The uh, the decoration here, the, the surface is, um, is a oxide, probably like an iron oxide or a mixture of iron and manganese. And I should say that this is um, a great example of what we're dealing with in these pieces. And we'll see better examples coming up, but you really have two questions. One is the form, how engaging is the form? And then what can you do with the surface to compel us, uh, to intrigue us? So uh, that's really what we're playing with. Here again, the same artist working with the same uh, interlocking module, uh, all slip cast from the same mold.
And this is an intriguing uh, sculpture, multiple kind of lots of modular units uh, sculpted um, very carefully. And because they have this common sort of bulbous core and then these uh, extensions of, of almost like spouts uh, coming up, uh, they appear to be all living in the same family, made much like uh, some sea creatures on, on the rocks or in this case on the bricks. Here we have a sculpture which is uh, inspired by um, a, a, a drill used to uh, drill holes for uh, oil exploration and that sort of thing. So um, you really have the core of it, all of these parts are thrown on the wheel and then assembled. And this is a very intriguing, uh, again, wall-mounted piece. And uh, I think the main feature of this is primarily the intrigue of the textural surface. And there are lots of different ways to create this kind of surface. So um, hopefully we'll be able to play with that sort of thing. But you can really see that's what I think this is mostly about. Some glaze, some stain. Uh, some dark clay, using a lot of different things here. And as you can see here, that piece that we were looking at is just one element in a multiple piece wall installation, playing with form and color throughout. This was made by our very own Lisa Jeton when she was a student at Solano Community College. Lisa created this piece um, with some mixed media. That's a found piece of iron grating. And then the actual clay component is the part that's hanging down um, like a, and it has a little steel element square in it as well. Uh, Lisa has worked with mixed media and ceramics quite successfully for some time. Here's another piece from that series. Again, a carefully crafted sort of orb-like form or potato shape and on an, a, just a, a piece of, uh, of rusted steel that Lisa found compelling. And these are some sculptures which uh, I find uh, gorgeous and, and compelling by uh, Juan, uh, Juan Santiago, who used to teach with us here. He's now in Southern Oregon, Southern Oregon State University. And what you can see here, um, what he does is he he works with a with a a block or a cube kind of motif, motif, and then um, he'll make these internal uh, textures. He'll he'll make these forms, put them together, keep them within the the cube, and then he'll build the cube around them. It sounds simple, but one of the things that make these work is that I've never met, I've met very few artists who have the precision and focus of Juan when he's doing something like this. It's just so precise. Here is another example and another view of uh, into the window of one of these pieces. And here's a whole wall of pieces. And you can see these are actually, um, uh, parts of a, uh, a series uh, using the foundation is a mold of a mold. So that's that's a base of a mold that Juan has cast and then um, created these pieces. Here's a close up. And one of the great things about this work is that though the it's very it's you know when you work in this kind of uh, series and you have you have a, a later assignment which is to show progression you you use a mold to create uh, an impression of the progression of a form and these these series pieces of wands that he displays on a shelf do that but. Um, but each one of the pieces is handled with such care and precision uh, that they have tremendous integrity and would certainly stand alone. You can see that, that Juan is also a master of texture and contrast. So he has a white slip, like a white porcelainous slip over a dark black mountain clay. 
And here again, we see that central to your project here is going to be a contrast between the, um, the form itself being intriguing and, and the, the surface treatment. It's always that way in ceramic sculpture that you have a form that you're trying to create, and then you're trying to create um, surface texture and uh, color to, to complement the form. And uh, this piece that hangs on a wall uh, is by uh, uh, Sue, uh, I want to say Sue Whitmore. Um, she's a professor at Chico, um, Chico State. This is a piece by Kenneth Price or Ken Price, a uh, famous uh, ceramic sculptor working out of the Venice Beach area of Southern California and um, exhibited all over the world. And what these pieces are, again, they're, they're coil built uh, to create these soft orbs. And you can see that the, the connections between the forms are much softer, creating a sort of unified, like almost one organic um, blobby kind of uh, uh, organism or something. And then what he does is he sprays many layers of auto paint. So these are, these are fired uh, to give them uh, hardness, probably to cone two or three. And then they're sprayed with auto paint layer after layer. And then he begins to sand them to, to reveal different layers of color. So here you can get a close up of that look. This is a technique that you can do also with colored slips, which I'll demonstrate for you. Here's an intriguing piece, these slab built uh, blocks mounted on a wall and then um, placed such that the, uh, those little spines do intermingle. Of course, this is really pushing the river here. This is pushing the limit of how clay likes to live and thrive and survive. The care which must be taken to be sure that you don't break off those little thin pieces uh, is enormous. Now, the little thin pieces inside the form, those work just fine. Uh, you can do that all you want, but the ones coming out uh, are really challenging um, your ability to keep something in a working condition here, so surviving. Get a close up of that joint there, that connection. And here again, a nice contrast. This is a four piece uh, sculpture. It's quite large. Uh, probably those uh, slabs are, I don't know if they're 18 by 18 or 24 by 24, but they're big. You can see that they're textured and they're smoke fired. That gives, they're, they're basically bisque fired and then fired with, uh, with wood or smoke in a way that, um, that gives a lot of carbon to the surface. And then this, uh, this piece on top glazed yellow. Um, again, a soft organic coil built form with lots of holes, uh, lots of holes that um, give it some uh, visual interest. And the contrast of color, the contrast of hard edge versus soft, of rough versus smooth, a lot of contrast going on in this piece that makes it quite successful. Same artist, uh, same idea basically. There's a, there's a ground plane surface that's rough and dark, uh, and then something sitting on it that's quite uh, bright and uh, a, a form uh, more engaged and full. This is a full rounded uh, kind of football shape or oval, and then uh, created by um, the soft clay or maybe applying some slip and then, and then deckling it, pulling it up uh, as, it, as it hardens. And again, this is the kind of thing that takes a lot of care and maintenance to keep it from breaking. This is a beautiful form. And if you look at it, um, you will begin to recognize that there's a positive and a negative component. So the overall shape is this giant soft teardroppy uh, piece hanging on the wall. But you can see inside it, um, it has it in the upper uh, two thirds, it has a, an echo of that teardrop shape in the negative. Um, and the shadow creates a little bit more darkness of the piece. Very successful, very intriguing form. Here's another uh, wall piece. Uh, again, contrast of surface with the shiny smooth to the uh, very, oops, very textured 
uh, surface, elongated uh, wall-based, um, kind of an organic, almost uh, uh, like uh, fauna kind of, or flora, I guess we would say, a flora thing, something, some kind of plant-like form. This is an artist um, from the Bay Area. He works out down by Santa Cruz. Um, and um, his uh, work is quite, he, he has evolved a, a technique. He came and demonstrated for us, and this is pretty complicated how he makes these things. But you can see again, the texture versus uh, the smooth versus texture. Um, and uh, so that gives you a real, um, you can see how nicely that works, the inside being a different texture than the outside. And this is wood fired. And sometimes I see pieces like this and I just want to laugh. I mean, the, the, I, I think the surfaces, I don't know if that they help all that, all that kind of ornate glaze work, um, but these, I, these little tails coming off of these forms are just uh, hilarious. I, I just find them uh, really enjoyable and they bring a lot of movement and a lot of intrigue. Again, the one in the center is gonna require a great deal of care and handling. Um, and they really work as a trio working together. Here would be a great example of your um, of your uh, progression assignment where you have to make something uh, repeated form that starts to change and progress. And at first, in, in this case, these are squares that just kind of undulate uh, which corner is lifting up and then there's something bursting through. And what I would say for a more successful project in this progression is that you would start to see the bulge before you saw the cracking form coming through. And that might, you know, in piece in section number three, maybe you'd start to see a bulge and then it get quite big in number four and then five, it bursts through kind of a, uh, that might make it more intriguing. We'll get a little close up of that breakthrough. Here again, uh, very simple, four thick tiles, uh, and they're just, um, I mean, it could be any size, really. They could be four by four, they could be 12 by 12, they could be 18 by 18, How, you know, it could be quite large. And these are, again, smoke-fired, um, and then the circle is established uh, by the contrast of texture and smooth. Very, very intelligent, very intriguing piece. Uh, an artist that I, I bring up uh, quite a bit, this is an artist named Graham Marks. And this is later work that's quite um, kind of uh, elegant and controlled, um, these, these half domes. Um, but and with this honeycomb pattern, it's, it's actually quite a careful construction. And so the, the texture, it's all about the, the texture and the, and the form. He's very successful at both creating um, intriguing surfaces and uh, a, a, just a basic uh, simplified pure form that sits, and his work always sits, uh, it might sit on a uh, elevated surface or on the ground. Here's a close up of the texture that you're seeing. Here's a, a piece of his that I like more. Again, the artist Graham Marks, and you can see uh, that uh, this, uh, so he builds these pieces. There's an inside a dome and an outside dome. And uh, they're actually very large. They're probably uh, three and a half feet from floor to the top. Um, and, and so there's a, a contrast of color, texture. Um, the way that they, they orient to the floor is quite exciting. They're really beautiful pieces. Here's a get a sense of a scale of a medium sized Graham Marx sculpture. Again, contrast of color, of texture between the flat surface on the front and the um, side, the outside. Another. This is, a, I'm going to show you a few that are kind of intriguing for another reason. Uh, these are uh, carefully crafted pieces uh, with, as you can see, the carving is really careful that um, on, the, on the segments, in between the segments, they're carving holes into the center of the piece, but 
um, it's it's quite a thick piece. So they carve those segment, the in-between spaces deep deeper, and then they put holes in there. And then for the thicker parts of the actual segments, they'll carve a bigger hole and then carefully start to carve uh, into the center of the piece with these three-way holes to give it really a lot of organic quality. So the artists that I know that work like this um, are inspired by photographs, uh, microscopic photographs of pollen and things like that. Uh, this is one such artist. And here's another option for presentation. This piece is hung from the ceiling. And I don't have too much I want to say about this. A slab built piece contrasted with, uh, uh, I don't know how that side piece is made, um, could be sculpted and then a mold could be made and then cast. Here we get back to um, the, uh, these are um, definite, um, inspired by microscopic photographs of pollen, these inter intersecting forms. Also more inspiration by pollen. This is an interesting process shot here. The artist is working on this spiked ball, almost looks like a landmine. So she's, she's created this ball perhaps by coil building. And you could also make it with a spherical mold. And then as it's turning leather hard, she's got these leather hard um, spikes that she's applying to it. The trick is how does she get, um, how would you get those spikes all the way around? And the answer would be that when this has had some substantial time to dry, she would carefully flip it onto a thick foam pad um, so that she could work on the bottom piece. Here's another one of those very carefully carved. So the piece is, is made and then allowed to get leather hard and then carved. A lot of patience. Another carved form, uh, but using in this case, I would probably, I would guess that the, the piece is formed, it gets leather hard and then uh, probably a power drill would be used. And you can see in some places, the holes actually intersected, whether that was intended or not, uh, it was accepted. And this is porcelain and uh, quite a large piece. Really uh, intriguing piece of, uh, of ceramics, also using that spike motif, uh, and then this uh, using color to get a sense of color and form to get a sense of these this this separating um, cellular cellular division or something almost. Here again, a wall piece with uh, lots of uh, contrast in gloss versus matte, in red versus white, uh, and then in in smooth versus uh, kind of these ornamented texture surface. This kind of yin yang half and half uh, kind of idea shows up quite a bit. Here's another example. Beautiful um, kind of lichen glaze, highly textured blue glaze, and then uh, a gold, uh, a kind of a gold glaze. There's a glaze that does that at cone seven, but it does involve lead. Here again, beautiful um, surface. And this, this is again that idea that um, you're really having two ways to communicate strongly. And one is by creating a very compelling form where your work is profoundly detailed and focused and precise, and then um, providing some kind of really dynamic surface. And we can look at these and, and, and ask ourselves how that's working. Almost every piece I show you has this idea of glossy versus matte, color versus something else, in this case, gold and blue, um, and then solid versus the, the holes. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, in these forms.
And between these two, you look at this one and then you take these same elements of these two rectangular forms, these like blocks, uh, and then you, um, you say, okay, and then you've got these kind of bulbous things around. So um, playing with uh, dynamics, okay, we'll make one taller. Um, we'll, we're going to uh, change the color and texture of the glaze. And we're gonna also play with those tall, uh, with those bulbs, we'll make them elongated rather than spherical. So uh, just playing with proportions and seeing what tends to work. And here's another variation. In this case, the contrast of color kind of almost describing an opening, which this does have, this has an opening at the top, um, but the gold feels like a very powerful way to suggest the lip and the opening. And here's the artist we've been looking at for these last few pieces. Uh, and uh, her last name is Scotchy, I believe. Here's a public art project that you can see her sitting on the pieces before they've been glazed. And here they are installed. And that concludes our presentation. Hope that you have gotten lots of ideas uh, and we'll look forward to your comments and to see what, what work you come up with. So remember, stay safe and make lots and lots of art. <laughs>